In this video, we're going to cover arachidonic acid metabolites, which are a class of mediators. We'll explore the major pathways and the key metabolites produced. We'll also look at the role of cyclooxygenase enzymes and the two common variants, COX-1 and COX-2. But before we start this lecture, be a sweet neuron and subscribe to the channel. Once you've done that, let's talk about Let's talk about arachidonic acid and how it's connected to different processes in the body. First of all, what is it? Arachidonic acid is a type of fat, specifically an unsaturated fatty acid that's, most, that's mostly found in the membranes. Now, its importance isn't about what it does on its own, but how it acts as a starting material, a precursor, to produce a family of autocoid mediators called eicosanoids. So eicosanoids are a family of lipid mediators that produce local effects within the body. They're like local messengers in the body. They help regulate things close to where they are produced, where they are made. And there are three main types of eicosanoids we'll focus on. We have prostaglandins, thromboxanes, and leukotrienes. Now, there are other types, but these three are the most important ones. Important ones we'll cover. So eicosanoids are involved in many different processes. So for example, they help control blood flow, affect how platelets clump together, they regulate stomach acid and manage kidney function. But their most well-known role is in inflammation, where they play a big part in how the body responds to injury or infection. So before we dive into the details of arachidonic acid metabolism, let's subtract complexity and take a moment to recap what's involved in inflammation, specifically acute inflammation. So what is it? Acute inflammation is the body's natural defense response to injury or tissue damage. So for example, think about what happens when you sprain your ankle. I've done that a couple of times while running. <laughs> so this type of inflammation is a protective mechanism that helps the body start the healing process. There are some classic signs of acute inflammation, including redness, warmth in the area, swelling, pain, and temporary loss of function. These symptoms play important roles in healing. So for instance, redness and warmth occur because more blood flows to the injured area, right? Swelling and pain along with the temporary loss of function encourage you to rest the affected area, like avoiding walking on a sprained ankle so it can heal properly. However, sometimes, like me, you stomp on the ground to see if you're okay, right? To see if it's a, like, I think I'm okay to run. Now, when tissue is damaged, it triggers the release of various chemicals that mediate the inflammatory response. Some of these chemicals make the area more sensitive to pain by stimulating nerves that detect pain. So these nerve signals and local mediators work together to create the symptoms of inflammation. Now, one key group of mediators involved in inflammation comes from arachidonic acid. Right? So this is where we're seeing the importance of why we're talking about this. This includes eicosanoids like prostaglandins and leukotrienes, which are produced in response to tissue damage. So these metabolites are responsible for many of the classic signs of inflammation, like redness, pain, swelling. Right. So it's important to remember that arachidonic acid metabolites are just one part of the picture. Okay, so there are other mediators like histamine and substance P, as you can see right here. They also play a role, and these different substances often interact with each other. So among the various mediators, prostaglandins produced from arachidonic acid are particularly important in the inflammatory response, and we're going to be focusing on it in this lecture. Okay, so why are prostaglandins so important in inflammation? Let's talk about it. During acute inflammation, prostaglandins directly affect blood vessels by relaxing the smooth muscle in their walls, causing the vessels to widen, okay? a process called vasodilation. The blood vessels dilate. When blood vessels dilate, their diameter increases, which reduces resistance to blood flow, and so it allows more blood to reach the affected area. And this increased blood flow causes two classic signs of inflammation. We have redness and warmth, right? So the redness comes from the extra blood in the area, and the warmth is due to blood carrying heat throughout the body. Beautiful. 
Now, these vasodilatory effects are not just because of the prostaglandins themselves. They also team up with other mediators like histamine, which also promote blood vessel widening. Okay, So together, prostaglandins and histamine enhances the effects, making the vasodilation stronger. So it leads to a synergistic effect that enhances vasodilation causes the blood vessels to widen. Another thing, prostaglandins also make blood vessels more permeable, meaning they allow fluid to leak out of the bloodstream and into the surrounding tissues. This leads to swelling or edema in the inflamed area. Okay, And finally, they amplify the effects of pain, causing chemicals like substance P, increasing the sensation of pain during inflammation. So overall, Prostaglandins are involved in many parts of the inflammatory process, causing redness, warmth, swelling, and pain. These molecules are part of the eicosanoid family, which plays a really important and central role in the body's response to injury. So let's talk more about the eicosanoid family. Let's dive deeper. Eicosanoids are a group of signaling molecules made from fatty acid precursors, and their primary precursor in human cells is arachidonic acid. So arachidonic acid is a type, like we said before, of unsaturated fatty acid that contains 20 carbon atoms, which is where the name eicosanoids come from. It comes from the Greek word eikos, which means 20. I think I'm saying that right. <laughs> Most of the arachidonic acid in cells is stored in the membranes as part of the phospholipid. So they're not, they're not free molecules. And what makes eicosanoids unique is how they are produced. So unlike other mediators like histamine or neurotransmitters, which are made ahead of time and stored in vesicles, eicosanoids are only made when the cell needs them. So this is where the uniqueness comes from comes in. This is because their chemical structure that doesn't allow them to be stored in vesicles. All right? So they're not stored in vesicles. They are only made when the cell needs them. Beautiful process. So eicosanoids like prostaglandins are lipid soluble. So what does that mean? It means they can easily pass through the membranes of vesicles where other mediators are usually stored. So as a result, they can't be stored in advance and must be synthesized on demand. Okay, so this on-demand production is an important feature of eicosanoids and sets them apart from many other types of signaling molecules in the body. So let's go over the basics of arachidonic acid metabolism. So this process starts with, of course, arachidonic acid, which is stored in the cell membrane as part of phospholipids. It's released when the enzyme phospholipase A2 cleaves it from the membrane. Now, this release is a critical step in the pathway and is often referred to as the rate limiting step. So, once released, arachidonic acid can follow several metabolic pathways depending on the type of cell and the specific enzymes present. So, these pathways include cyclooxygenase pathway, so it produces prostaglandins and thromboxanes. We also have the lipooxygenase pathway, which produces leukotrienes, and there are other enzymatic pathways which create additional metabolites, which we won't cover in this lecture. So the specific pathway taken also depends on the stimulus that triggered the release of arachidonic acid and how the and how the cell regulates the enzymes involved. Okay, so our main key takeaway here. Just to summarize what we've covered, arachidonic acid is the starting point for various important molecules, and the enzyme phospholipase A2 is responsible for releasing arachidonic acid from the membrane. Okay, and prostaglandins and thromboxanes are produced via the cyclooxygenase pathway, and we have leukotrienes, which are produced from this pathway here. This understanding sets the stage for us to explore these pathways and their products in more detail. Let's talk about prostaglandins and how they're made. So prostaglandins, like we've said, are special mediators that are produced only when needed. They don't last long in the body because they have a very short half-life. So this means their effects are localized to the site where they're produced, rather than spreading throughout the body or having long-term effects. Now the key enzyme responsible for making prostaglandins is called cyclooxygenase or COX. Now there are two main variants of this enzyme that we'll focus on. We have COX-1 
and COX-2. So these are isoforms of the same enzyme. They're highly homologous. So there's, they have lots of structural and sequence similarities, but they are different in where they are expressed and where they are expressed, right? So the tissues that they are located in, and also when these enzymes are expressed, so when they are activated. So the first one is known as COX-1. And you'll sometimes hear this referred to as the constitutive enzyme or the house keeper cyclooxygenase. It's found in many cell types and has constitutive activity in those cell types. And it has important roles in, number one, protecting the stomach lining. So prostaglandins from COX-1 prevent damage to the stomach lining by gastric acid. It also helps control blood vessel diameter and platelet aggregation, which are crucial for blood clotting and proper blood flow. And it also... The COX-1 prostaglandins also ensures adequate blood flow to the kidneys. Okay, so that's COX-1. The second isoform is COX-2, which is sometimes referred to as the inducible isoform. So under normal conditions, most tissues don't produce much of COX-2. However, during inflammation, COX-2 is turned on or induced, right? So this enzyme then produces prostaglandins that play key roles in the inflammatory response. So these prostaglandins contribute to swelling, redness, and other signs of inflammation that we talked about earlier, right? And they also make pain receptors more sensitive, which increases the sensation of pain. So these are the two variants. We have COX-1 and COX-2. Now, in the next lecture, we're going to look at the drugs that affect arachidonic acid metabolism. So I'll see you there.